glad you could join us this morning for a webinar presentation by DeSoto Systems and HP on the business value of virtual reality. I want to go ahead and introduce our two speakers. Ralph Gibbles is the as uh, DeSoto Systems Director of Global Market Development for the energy inter excuse me energy industry. He joined DeSoto in May 2001 and brings over 15 years of experience in high technology in the computer aided design software market to his role in product lifecycle management, business development, marketing, and strategy. He focuses primarily on developing new initiatives and opportunities in a market now realizing the need for product lifecycle management. His dedication and experience in bringing the benefits already realized by other major industries to this burgeoning market have already achieved several notable successes in the hydro, wind, and nuclear power generation in oil and gas industries. He has a master's degree in civil engineering from the University of Munich in Germany and has extensive experience working for leading engineering and architectural firms in Germany. Our co-presenter today is Robert Michal. He is the principal consultant of the HP 3D Visualization Services team in Pontiac, Michigan. Since 1998, he has managed the delivery team and works with HP sales and account teams to provide 3D visualization solutions for HP clients across several industries and around the world. He holds a bachelor's degree in computer science from Michigan State University. And with that, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Rolf and Rob. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Thanks, Nicole, for the introduction. Yeah, and welcome. Good morning and good afternoon for some who join us probably from, uh, from Europe on this call. Yeah, we're very excited to have our technology partners here, uh, HP and Barker, with us today. HP and Dust System have had a 16-year technology alliance covering all aspects of joint R&D and marketing. And while Barco and DS have established a relatively new technology alliance around the Barco display systems coupled with DS solutions, their commitment to innovation and solution excellence brings added value now to our efforts at Dust Systems around the energy sector. So I'm very pleased to have uh, us together here for this call. Um, yeah, Rob and I developed um, an agenda which uh, goes through various topics you see here on, on our overview. And I would like to start off with um, a quick introduction just to share with you different business and industry challenges we see out in, in the field. Uh, and then quickly dive into the main topics we want to cover today, which is around virtual planning and virtual training, and then have um, Rob talk about the specific offerings HP has in this field, uh, as well as some of the Barker solutions, which really complete the overall uh, offering from a software and hardware and service perspective to allow you to uh, create a virtual reality environment for the training and planning purposes. With that, I would like to start with um, a list here a comprehensive list of various business challenges. Obviously, there can be many. I picked a, a few, and I'm just going to give a few examples of what we believe is, is very critical. If you just look, uh, obviously, clearly in the spending in this industry, uptime is one channel challenge is uh, a clearly a critical aspect. If you just look at the cost often spent or deferred to in this industry, the so-called NPT, non-productive time, which can be simple delays and in the maintenance process, maybe delays because of uh, unknown scenarios, the workers not trained in particular in a way that uh, they can perform the task to the best uh, possible um, uh, quality uh, and maybe don't have sometimes the right equipment or information available. There's a huge range of costs often involved. We hear numbers up to half a billion dollars per year. Obviously, in, in the industry in oil and gas, you have uh, a lot to deal with uh, QHSE performance, the quality, health, safety, environmental performance, just to obviously ensure the simple fact that you want to have an environment with uh, ideally no injuries or uh, at least uh, fewer and less injuries over time. Still, this industry has to deal with uh, fatal rates, which unfortunately twice as high as in construction, which is in itself still fairly high and eight times higher than of all workers. Another challenge clearly is um, just looking at the pure need of increased energy and the increased continuous need to produce more oil and gas is to do more with less. If you just look at numbers, it's, uh, it's amazing how many more 
just if you look at drilling rigs or new offshore platforms are under uh, construction or being planned, some numbers indicate that 40 more new rigs are planned for just pure ultra deep waters alone in the next 10 years. And their budgets talked about a 330 billion in expenditure of offshore operations in the next five years. So staggering numbers, but also a lot of challenges uh, we're going to go into in some more detail uh, during this presentation. And since training is a topic, it's really interesting to look at the um, way people and workers are trained today. Uh, there's various means. Um, an obvious one is, is training centers, like you often have like flight simulators, which are um, few, um, not often frequently or easily available, and other means are often very paper-based, um, maybe sometimes supported through videos. So we'll go through this through this uh, through these presentations as well. If you look at specific challenges from the industry, um, just want to again mention a few: how to validate those complex maintenance and refurb refurbishment project activities, how to improve maintenance quality, safety, and efficiency, and easily explain and share information. So what we often see is that there's obviously a lot of knowledge which is with people, which is um, with individuals, and obviously it's a high risk that this knowledge is maybe not captured in a very effective way. And if you look at one of the challenges I mentioned in the aging workforce, you obviously have to deal with a lot of um, potential know-how, IP, leaving the organization. So a challenge clearly is to capture the information, to capitalize on knowledge, and to create an environment to train people effectively. I just selected here three key topics if you look on the right of the slide. I mean, how can you perform effective human activities and analysis? Like for example, to see how accessible is an area, how reachable is it in order to perform a particular maintenance task? How can you identify equipment and the removal path, how to install it and remove it without clashes and enough clearance? Again, there's not a lot of means today to do this very effectively. We'll show you some examples how this can be done in a virtual uh, environment. And then again, the topic around uh, to simulate and plan mechanical and equipment kinematics. This image, if you look, uh, shows some robotics or some remote operated devices. Again, to have an environment to do this in a virtual area is, 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 is of interest. Then the next one, if you just look at a pure training pers perspective, you have to deal with workers to perform efficient scenarios and safe maintenance tasks without interrupting you know, the operations uh, and maintenance part of, of your facility. How can you exercise emergency situations and evaluate room and, uh, human reaction? So again, very interesting topics. And the challenge is, if you just look at the uh, offshore business and even in refineries, it's very challenging in, in interrupting the business if you want to train people in the field. So to do this remotely um, is a challenge. And there's a lot of interesting means, again, which we will show you here um, to, to tackle those challenges. What is today um, a usual as-is process? Again, I mentioned, I just want to show you a few examples. If you look at the situation you have often, it's very paper-based. You maybe have video-based instruction guides. There's very sophisticated training centers. Obviously, I don't want to diminish the fact that they do exist. But often, by the time they're installed, they can be obsolete. Uh, and they're not as dynamic to change them to obviously changing environment on, on the platforms or on the refineries. To finalize by learning on actual plan side can be also quite a challenge because, again, it's a disruption of the ongoing operation and potentially even risk in uh, losing production. And again, if you look at the cost um, of any facility to be run, you want to keep the uptime at an optimum. So the two topics we're going to talk about are the virtual planning and virtual training. And I purposely separated them, but also want to make sure that you understand they're obviously related. And basically, the virtual planning 
is all for those tasks which need to be optimized, maybe they're yet not fully, fully understood, and, and you see the company see an opportunity to improve those particular tasks. And we'll show you various use cases around those um, real quick that you can link 3D data like your scheduling in from, from Primavera to a 3D CAD data. You can perform kinematic analysis. You can do the human stuff. And then, very important, capture this information, those routine tasks in, in a digital format, let's say. And then the virtual training is really all about bringing people in an interactive, immersive environment and experience. And it could be the information went through from a planning perspective, but it could also be taking information which already exists, is well-defined, there's well-defined processes, well understood, but they rather today exist in a paper-based form, uh, and you want to bring those into a virtual reality type environment. With that, I want to share with you a very quick quote I found very um, well addressing and explaining what we're showing here. And it's from Confucius, a Chinese philosopher. It's quite old quote, and it's still, I think, extremely valid. It says, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. So really an emphasis on uh, learning by doing is, is critical and I think the way to do move forward with, with any of those topics. So let's talk about virtual planning in more detail. This next slide just indicates the simple path, and you'll see over the period of the presentation, I will explain this in a little bit always more detail so it really is clear how to perform this and also for you to understand um, how effective and how easy this is today to do and how cost effective it is to perform those kind of um, scenarios. So again, the starting point always is, if you look go from left to the right, the fact that you need 3D information and there's today no more excuse not to collect this information that you already have it in a 3D model or through various means create this information. And then you bring this into, in the, the case here of just a system with Delmia, into an environment where you can start this particular uh, processes and planning exercises I will explain to you in, in a little bit more detail. Then again, there's an opportunity to reuse this information uh, for the learning purpose in 3D via virtuals. So what is it exactly? 3D virtual planning. Very simple. It's really all about to plan virtual maintenance activities based on 3D plant information, 3D plant models, to validate and capitalize complex project scenarios. This information is basically a step-by-step -step process. And I see the slide is not comp coming up yet. Hopefully there's not too much delay. I'll just keep explaining it. You will see the information here in a second. Um, basically, the steps are that you capture, again, the physical asset, the plant information. You create an as-maintained or as-is 3D model. You then link time and activities and resources like humans, tools, equipment, information to the 3D model and work breakdown structure. You then can easily replay, validate, and rehearse those scenarios prior to performing any critical work during an actual maintenance project. So this is obviously fundamental and very simple to go through those scenarios. And our experience now is that this can be very easily achieved. So from any starting point of a project to showing results and an ROI is anywhere between two, three months, um, very comfortable. Um, to, to get to this point with the kind of steps I share with you. Now, how does it work as a next step? It's very distinct steps you can go through. And those steps, uh, again, based on the fact that you have to capture information, prepare the data, develop operations uh, and asset performance scenarios. And then the interesting thing is that you consistently validate the scenarios and study various alternatives. So if you look at this 
this slide, which um, should say how does it work. Again, I'll look a little bit over to my colleague here to see if there's not too much delay. Um, but it should show you now uh, a step, the four steps I explained earlier, and then a little more detail. So basically, again, you start off with 3D data, laser scan, or existing data. You import this information and link it to the scheduling information and resource information and create those detailed planning activities and then basically prepare those. And then with that, you start simulating this environment against clashes um, or interferences. You can simulate mechanical kinematic equipment, removal and placement. And then again, which is very unique around this offering, also include the human aspect and validate that those against ergonomic requirements. And very important, it's not just around the QHSE, but also like OSHA type requirements, which are based on uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. OK, so I think this chart really explains all to the players uh, who are involved in each of those steps and how you could perform uh, such a particular task. And again, with the opportunity to reuse this, this planning data for training. And then what we experience is, and what our customers tell us, that you consistently improve those best practices and add new scenarios and really over time um, improve and further um, increase the amount of information you can store and reuse for future projects. The next slide is just an example out of the human activity. It's shown in the center a little video um, with a worker performing a particular task. Again, the main point here is that you have an environment where you can create human task simulations and validate those against uh, critical ergonomic requirements. You can comply with regulations and clearly understand those and visualize those. It often is um, very helpful not just to train or plan this project, but also often for um, validation and traceability for uh, projects later on to see how you actually went about the planning of those projects in case um, this needs to be reused or explained to, to other companies or entities or partners. So what you do with this solution, um, that you can have those various activities like measurements, uh, activity analysis, task simulation, then you can create even over time a catalog, a human catalog of different workers of different size, uh, of different kind of capability to perform those tasks. So you can really precisely uh, plan those scenarios uh, to understand how many workers do I need for a task? Is it one? Is it two? Is it a team? And obviously a critical point is that this often helps to avoid very costly and hard to change physical mockups. This next slide here shows actually an example from um, a, a customer of ours, Entergy, a US-based utility who used Dalmia to perform this particular project, the reactor coolant pump replacement project. And this was a very effective way to simulate this removal of the equipment against any possible clashes and interferences and to show the planners if they have to maybe remove any critical equipment, if you have to maybe create or have additional supporting structures, and how many people you maybe have to have on site in order to perform the task. People might have to help with hand signals or any other kind of uh, interaction with uh, crane operators or people involved in this process. The next example is from Hydro-Quebec, which is another customer and user of uh, also a CATIA solution as well as Delmia. Um, this project experienced a tremendous value using this kind of process to plan specifically the, sim the dismantling, excuse me, the dismantling, moving, and reassembly of equipment inside a powerhouse. The project, uh, the group was very uncomfortable with to plan out. There was tremendous, as you can see in the business benefits, uh, values experienced, um, I mean, in a way unbelievable, but the refurbishing schedule was shortened by more than three years using this kind of process, and um, about 50 million uh, Canadian dollars saved. So actually it was a fairly simple uh, project and process to go through 
very high return on, on your investment was experience. So let's talk about the virtual training aspect. So virtual training, now we get into the uh, immersive and interactive environment. Just kind of reverse a little bit the slide you saw earlier. So again, the starting point is 3D information you obviously need in order to use this data and apply behavior and interactivity to it. So on the next slides, I will uh, explain that also in detail as we have done uh, just for the virtual planning. So what is virtual training? Virtual training is all about to train workers in an interactive and immersive learning environment, performing realistic operations and maintenance scenarios. Good reference always is if you see today modern uh, high-end games, how um, realistic they often can be. I mean, just experience yourself um, or picture yourself instead of in a game environment being in a real industrial environment. And again, you see the steps you, you can go through from the 3D um, physical assets you create, you add interactivity behavior, and then importantly, you have various means to deploy, the, deploy those to your trainees. This can be online, offline, in a virtual reality environment. You can use head mount devices. Caves will give you some examples uh, in, a, in a short while. Then again, you can perform those tasks in this environment, experience those practical maintenance and operation scenarios in virtual reality. And even, which is obviously important, is you can have a multi-user environment experience this work in a, in a teamwork. The next image should show you a, an environment which is actually built by, by uh, Barco and also HP, our partner in our headquarters in, in Valaisé of Dessa System. You see um, a person inside a refinery uh, taking some measurements, and he's immersed inside this, this room. And the following video sh uh, shows you an, a quick example using this information for training purposes. So it takes a worker through a particular maintenance task. He's asked to complete a task like finding a leak inside the facility. He has to ask to stop this leak. Uh, he will ask to take an oil sample. And along the way, he needs to find his way around the plant. So plant orientation itself as a training component is extremely uh, important and effective. And at the end of this step, you actually get a report on how long did it take, how many times did you potentially go the wrong way, and you get statistics which obviously are of value for the trainee and the trainer, and then to learn and further improve the scenario, to capture it, and further optimize it. So I hope you saw this video. It might be some delays here, um, but that was uh, part of a further explanation of, of this scenario. So how does it work? Again, I think by now you understand the 3D assets are the critical starting point. Now in 3D via virtuals, you import this information. And in this rapid development environment, you give life, as we like to say, to the 3D content and the behavior um, of this information. And so you add the interactivity, and you add avatars and other, other elements to it. And then importantly, after this interactivity and behavior is added onto the 3D information, you have the various means to experience it. And I will we'll give you some examples here again in a, in a second and to deploy it interactively and have it available 24-7, uh, 365 pretty much. So the next slide actually shows some examples um, from our partners. And in order to realize the improved asset and operational productivity and safety, you need, a, in addition to the software I showed, a highly reliable and high-performing secure technology environment. So through the component partnership of DESA System, HB, and Barco, your training courses can be more, even more realistic. So the DESA System certified workstation enables the authoring environment for the 3D assets, so the, the uh, image you see here on the screen and helps give life to those assets, applying interactivity and behavior using them 3D via virtuals. 
So in addition, the HP technology can power up the experience with, with the Barker Systems displays. And you see a few examples here from left to right. I mean, you have a basic training room set up with a common screen, a CAD wall, a flat shape where you can experience and collaborate more effectively uh, using virtual reality. Then you can obviously go a step further, have curved shape type uh, scenario setups. Uh, the cube shape, I believe, is the one that Barco and HP have uh, established in our headquarters in Valise, which they sponsor. And then you can go all the way to a dome shape environment, almost like a, an IMAX theater. If you look at this image here on the slide, I think people look um, are in very comfortable chairs to experience this uh, full uh, immersion in, inside this environment. So very interesting ways uh, to communicate, to deliver this information. Uh, and again, uh, often also used with head mount devices, uh, 3D screens, and 3D glasses. I would like to take one step deeper in for you to understand the how does it work, the virtual training aspect. I think again by now the the information, how it's captured, I also want to make sure you understand that ISO 5926, obviously the efforts we do around uh, with Fiat Tech are critical to help collect various sets of data towards the 3D master model, I called it. So now in, inside the behavior and scenarios, you can add to the 3D information equipment behavior so that equipment uh, that this, this particular area, there's a leak, that there can be a leak in a valve or pump. Uh, you can have this behavior added to the 3D information. You can add particular scenarios to the 3D data. You can add orientation aids. It's very important if you have somebody new to a plan to find, them, to find the right path and make themselves familiar. So again, if you look back at the business challenges I uh, shared earlier, just the pure fact that people are often new to a site and lose valuable time to find their way around can be minimized or almost reduced um, to zero if they can experience the plan up front before they reach the actual site. And then important, obviously, is that you add behaviors, avatars, several people to a training scenario, and then you deliver, you publish those in the various means um, now you saw in the various slides before. So a typical easy use case is for a worker, as I mentioned, to go through very simple steps. So I want to encourage you that you understand that this is not a huge investment. It's not a very time, timely effort to go through. This scenario here is just a great first step to perform very quickly from a pure plant orientation, make yourself familiar with a safety environment and safety basics learning those specifics over and over again. Again, this is a very forgiving environment. Uh, errors are allowed, and you can really um, use this as, as often as, as needed, and then practice those procedures in context of maybe unplanned incidents. With that, I want to show two more examples of customers who are using the 3D VR virtuals environment. The slide you see here is from uh, EDF, which is in uh, French. Uh, electric utility. This is a scenario done quite a while ago and still very effective for, for EDF, which is a simulation for a crane operator to uh, practice very sensitive scenarios inside a nuclear facility. And I just want to point out that this person you see here, the eight characters inside the scenarios, inside the scenarios in, in the collaborative environment, in this 3D avatar, is the operations manager, and it's actually animated with over 40 gestures to specific equipment handling. So there's a lot of very interesting um, areas you can address with this kind of environment to gain uh, a lot of value for your operational planning and your virtual training uh, practices. The last example is, and there's also a video here on the top right. It's quite dark. It's on purpose because it's a scenario from the mining industry, actually from the University of New South Wales in Australia. And you can imagine in that industry, it's very difficult, almost impossible to train people in the actual uh, site um, in a mining facility. So this group took on this challenging task to train workers in a virtual environment. So they are well prepared before they reach 
uh, any site and are trained in a safe and forgiving environment to obviously improve dramatically the workers' preparedness. So in summary, I would just like to point out that this topic is of, of great value across many areas. Um, I pointed out three specific topics here. Clearly, overall, um, the virtual planning and the virtual training impact your business. And very much, I think the top point is the project risk. And risk can be cost, it can be time, it can be obviously also related to health and safety, the second point. But by having all stakeholders, stakeholders share the same view of the operations and maintenance process to reduce risk during operations and downtime is a critical point. Obviously, ensuring health and safety, the full training environment you saw, you can easily picture how this can affect um, the better preparedness for those workers going on, on site in this kind of dangerous environment like an offshore drilling rig or a refinery. So for, her, for those workers to minimize the risk is of great value. And very importantly also that you capture this information, you retain the knowledge and capture your company know-how and best practices for key operations and procedures to reuse for future projects and train new workers and have an environment to consistently improve on is obviously of extreme value. Again, if you look back at the pure challenge of having an aging workforce, you have to deal with a lot of people who maybe come from other industries uh, who are retrained to work in oil and gas. Again, I can think of, of, of many, many good reasons to, to apply this kind of processes to your business. So with that, um, I think I'm handing this over to to Rob now. Rob, I'm going to give you control so you can move forward. Well, thank you very much, Rob. Appreciate that, and thank you, Nicole, for the uh, kind introduction earlier. Appreciate that, and thank everyone for their time today. Uh, good day to all. And uh, again, I'm a 3D visualization consultant from HP. I've been working in this. Uh, field of visualization for you know 15 years or so in, in a variety of capacities and uh, look forward to sharing a little bit about what we offer here at HP. Uh, the, the image on the, the title slide here that you see is a facility that we've had for many years here and you know, so we're speaking from hands-on experience. We, we're not just you know consultants that don't touch things like this. You know, we, we've had our own facilities. We've operated them day in and day out and created the content and and, and really from all aspects of the day-to-day uh, -day operation. So we uh, are fully uh, experienced and capable of the day-to-day uh, you know, -day support of these kinds of rooms. Okay. Rolf, I don't see my um, mouse moving. Do you want to go ahead and advance for me? Yeah, just a second. Hold on. Okay. Okay, try now. Okay, there it is. Thank you. Okay, so uh, there's a, there's a whole spectrum of services that we we offer here, and uh, I'm really going to take a deep dive into one of them, but I'll briefly touch on some of the rest. Uh, you know, in the areas of design and analysis visualization, we offer some consulting on the uh, strategy of enterprise math data. And, and as Rolf mentioned, the, the leverageability of 3D assets throughout the entire enterprise, from creation through reuse through many different iterations and, and designing a uh, mechanism for as many users as possible to see the data that they need to see in the format that is most comfortable for them. Uh, we've also uh, assist customers in, in holding immersive reviews and and being facilitators and, and running the environments for them on a, on a daily basis. And then what we're going to talk about more specifically today is the actual you know, uh, facilities design and implementation that we can uh, offer to you to help put together a solution specific to your particular needs. And then there's, there's other downstream uses of the technology as well, and we provide services in that as, uh, similarly. Uh, as far as creating uh, things for sales and marketing visualization, for product configuration, and web-based catalogs, uh, 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 leveraging the same assets into online virtual worlds for, for uh, different kinds of collaboration, as well as creating uh, you know, maybe one-time use or, or multi-use uh, trade show displays. 
And then finally, you know, leveraging a lot of these same assets downstream into technical publications. And as uh, Rolf talked about, you know, the virtual training is in addition to printed uh, and, and presentation type training. So you, there's ways to create uh, you know, the, those 3D assets into forms that are uh, readable into documents, you know, electronic documents and, and web pages. So we can help people with those uh, as well. Now, just a few examples of some of the uh, systems that we've worked with. Again, all shapes and sizes. Uh, you know, the, the example you saw earlier from uh, the, the Dassault facilities, as well as some of the others that we've done. And just wanted to point out, you know, on the bottom right is a, is an example of a, of a mobile system where we've created it on a, a mobile workstation with a, a very low-end uh, head-mounted display with some tracking system, something that actually fits into a carry-on bag that you can take on the road with you to, uh, uh, you know, to bring that out to the field or to re remote locations and, and show people how to, how to work with things. So it doesn't have to be this huge installation based on a, a physical room. It can be as simple as something that, uh, that can be packed into a, a small carry-on type bag. Now what we do uh, as far as process to, to work with a customer is to start at the beginning with an assessment. We understand, try to understand the needs, try to understand the, the uses that, they're, that, that the customer have, and uh, you know, work with them to design a solution to suit those specific needs. And then there are several phases that, that can vary in, in, in length and, and duration based on complexity. But we have this established process of how we go about uh, working with a customer, helping them to understand the pros and cons of different scenarios, and understanding the, uh, you know, the, the best solution that, that help uh, you know, address their business needs. So from working with them to organize and support the actual construction if, the, if that needs to be done, to building and inst installing the system, working with the other partners to uh, bring all of the, of the uh, components together and performing that testing training and, and uh, pro offering uh, on-site uh, support and operations for, for ongoing day-to-day -day use. So it's uh, an established process and something that we do uh, uh, regularly. So. Uh, now, the typical visualization system that people are, you know, have seen, they really tend to recognize and understand the actual display system because that's what they see. That's where they interact with the overall system. But it really is made of these uh, a, a number of components that have to work together seamlessly in order to make that uh, uh, you know, work the best on a daily basis. So on, on, the, on the bottom right-hand side of this uh, uh, diagram we've got the software applications which are very important as well as the you know the computer platform that is necessary in order to create the uh, the imagery that goes on to the display system and uh, you know Ralph also kind of mentioned that you know there's display systems can take all shapes and sizes uh, from from head mounted displays to walls to caves to you know different uh, even desktop type solutions so uh, you know, t taking that into account and, and making sure everyone understands the implications, you know, that, that it, there is not a one-size-fits-all for, for all type of applications. And, uh, you know, there's probably a, uh, a, a solution that, that, that's just the right size for a particular customer's needs. Now, the other thing to remember is, you know, how do you get data into this environment and how do you take the results of these experiences out? So there's business process and, and uh, and integration with the, the raw data assets that, that is required. So how do you bring in that data? Uh, what is the preparation process? How much of that can be automated in order to make this go smoothly and easily? So you know, having that process defined is very important. And bringing that into the proper format and defining the behaviors and, and the experience that you want to uh, you know, experience in that immersive environment. So there's a variety of uh, you know, image generator computers that are capable of, of uh, working in this environment. You know, we're kind of featuring the Z800 workstations today, but there are also similar uh, you know, uh, server-type environments that have attached graphics, as well as some of the blade graphics systems that, that are uh, becoming more popular today as well. So we, you know, that is a, a key part of the, the system, and, and you know, integrating all those components together is what, what we specialize in. And then on the back end of that is, is capturing the output. You know, how do you, uh, you know, what is the business process in, in order to capture the output? How do you feed that back into whatever change processes are necessary or, or decision gates that are being uh, uh, made? And, uh, you know, just to, to feed that back in and have that cycle back into iteration to, to reach a final conclusion. Uh, and then similarly, whether it's, you know, if it's a training environment, 
you know, how, how is that um, training validated with the, with the trainees and, and feed that back into the process for future improvement. Okay, so this, this is sort of a, uh, a, a view of the various uh, Z class workstations that HP offers. And you see the, you know, the, the Z400 and Z600 are aimed at the different markets. And the Z800 is very clearly aimed at the high-end, high compute requirements, high graphics requirements for oil and gas. And so that is really the, uh, the focus of our uh, uh, you know, offering today is, is you know, making sure that those types of configurations meet customers' needs. And whether it's a single workstation for individual engineers or whether it's clustered solutions that are required for, for the high-end uh, visualization systems, you know, that, that is the, the type of uh, equipment that, uh, that is you know, designed specifically to handle all of the requirements. And if uh, the next slide here kind of gives, uh, gives you a sense of some of the features and differentiation between these, two, these three different uh, models. You can kind of see that uh, they've all got uh, large memory capacity for 64-bit applications, you know, but looking at the Z800, they can go up to 192 gigabytes. So that, that is a great deal of memory, and, and you know, the applications are designed to try and use that, that kind of an information. You know, again, different levels of storage, and all capable of working with the, uh, the high -end, uh, highest end graphics cards from the commercial side of the NVIDIA uh, uh, computer graphics uh, card family. Now, a couple of other HP uh, products that I wanted to highlight today that, that are relevant, I believe, in, in, in this in environment is to talk about ways in which uh, you might perform collaboration. So there's, there's a new product that just came out in September called Skyroom. And what it is is a way to in, combine both desktop video collaboration with the sharing of uh, high-end graphics. So it provides you the ability to do instant collaboration, very ad hoc type of collaboration events uh, with up to four participants, so yourself and three others, to look at and see the same thing at the same time. So not only do you get the visual uh, feedback from, from the facial expressions and, and the, uh, the nonverbal uh, communication, but you'll also be able to share and see the, uh, the, the graphics that you want to see at, 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 in real time uh, speed. So you know, not, not, not to talk down to the, uh, the, the technology we're using today, but you know, there is certainly a lag between you know, just flipping from slides and, and trying to watch a movie. And what Skyroom will offer is the ability to see those kinds of things in real time, whether it's rotating 3D graphics or you know, performing animations or watching, uh, watching videos. And it, it, it is able to share that in a real time capacity. Uh, it's affordable, it's simple, simple to use, and it, you know, it is uh, you know, something that is relatively new to the market, but uh, we want to get the word out about it and, and what its capabilities are. So if you'd like to follow up with further questions on that, we'd be happy to uh, provide you with additional information. And then secondly, there's another tool that is uh, somewhat similar and actually leverages some of the same, you know, that, that Skyrim was based on some of the same technology, which is HP's remote graphics software, you know, RGS for short. And what this does is allow people to not necessarily have to have the high-end workstation at their, at their workplace, you know, at, at their uh, desktop. They can leverage the uh, graphics capabilities of remote systems, you know, whether it's inside the, you know, elsewhere within the building, or you know, if they're working remotely, maybe they're at home and they need to access one of the uh, computers at work, they can get into there and, again, see real-time interaction with that uh, graphics device without having to have the high-end graphics capability built into the machine that they're using. So this kind of plays into the, 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 uh, the model of a centralized graphics capacity with with thin client uh, 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 interfaces for, for individual uh, users, so it, it re so there's there's that aspect of it that that one to one you know me being remotely and accessing remote uh, capability, but also is the ability to share that desktop without the video collaboration that that the Skyrim provides. So there's the ability to do that uh, sharing of the desktop, sharing of keyboard, sharing of uh, mouse, etc., and uh, you know, again, a, a different level of collaboration and, and allows people to see things in a, in a much better way. And uh, th this kind of collaboration used to be able to be done with sharing of the data and actually replication of the data. And this is, an, uh, this is the much different way in which it's done because it's, it's just showing pictures. It is not 
not actually moving data from one location to another. So it saves time in, in that you don't have to move data, you don't have to wait for downloads, and it is secure because you're really only sharing pictures. You're not sharing any of the, uh, the actual data itself. So interesting tool, again, you know, if you'd like to have some further follow-up, I'd be happy to, uh, to do so. And just a simple, uh, small sample of some of the HP clients in the energy industry. Uh, this is you know, you know, a, a subset of dozens and dozens that, that we work with, so we do have a fairly strong presence within the industry. And uh, we're very much uh, looking forward to work with, with additional uh, clients in this space. So again, thank you for your, op your time today. Again, we've got uh, some contact information. Uh, and we'd be happy to uh, ad address any questions here. So I'll hand it back to Nicole for, uh, for her to facilitate. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, both Rolf and Rob. Um, it was an excellent presentation. I do have a few questions. And for those of you who are still on, uh, if you have anything that you want clarification in, now would be a good time to type those questions in. Um, first question, do views include first-person views? Are there any use cases? And have you done work to virtualize well operations center? Do you need more information or Is it for Rob? <laughs> Sounds like for Rob. Question Do views include first person views? And are there any use cases or have you done work to virtualize the well operations center? Um, Ralph, I thought you might want to take that. Yeah, you know, I think there's, we're starting to work on, on this particular topic. I don't think there is a particular use case scenario today, but it's a, actually an interesting question. That's an area we're currently looking at to start developing scenarios for well control systems. Great. Um, well, and, and, and Nicole, just just you know, specifically on the views, generally there are you know you can set the view that you choose. You know, that's one of the great things about you know the virtual reality type technology is you can choose to have that first person view or any third person view that you want to 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 watch the uh, a simulation from. Great. Thank you. Uh, someone wants to know if this technology is using Web 2.0 technology. I know these are tough ones, aren't they? <laughs> well, yeah, I, generally, this is not a, a web-based uh, you know, type solution. You know, that, that might be in, in the uh, you know, online virtual world type uses, but this is, this is strictly uh, you know, using local graphics capabilities directly to the uh, display systems. Um, I'm getting a lot. A lot of questions are coming in quickly. And I am getting a lot of questions about a copy of this presentation. So for those of you who joined after the presentation started, we, we are recording it. We will be posting it to the Fiatech website. And you will be getting a, an email with a link following this um, presentation later today with, with the link. So for all of you who, who want copies, yes, um, you will be able to get that. Um, Someone wants to know, does the solution include the business consultant part or just the 3D graphic rendering and display? Well, the, the 3D consulting aspect would be something that you would, you would ask for. You know, it is not, uh, it's not part of the base offering. You, know, you can purchase the products, you can install the products, and then you can also ask for and have the uh, consulting of how to best apply those for, for your particular business situation. If I might add, I mean, there's, there's obviously services or like uh, business consulting, if that's the question for from a pure, let's say, HP hardware perspective, and then there's the aspect of creating, you know, the, the content. And, and again, it, it's fairly um, uh, a very defined process by now where often the customer needs some hand-holding for a fairly short period of time, but then it's very much capable if anybody has particular visualization or CAD knowledge to do those tasks themselves. Or even in the planning case, it really requires a person who knows how to, a planner, a person who knows how to do project management or scheduling to kind of create those scenarios. So the goal is to very quickly get um, the individual or the person or team who has to perform the, either the planning or the training aspect to do this themselves. 
Great, thanks. Um, someone wants to know where is the HP Virtual Reality Center located? Well, we have uh, had that facility here in the in the Michigan uh, area for some time, and uh, we're in the process right now of uh, relocating to another facility. So we're it isn't physically standing up at the moment, but we're in the process of working on uh, uh, another version of that. Great. Um, someone would like to know: Are use cases for operator routine duties, or are there use cases for operator routine duties, and if so, if they contacted you, could they get um, examples or get links? Hmm. Need I more information, maybe, more. to answer that? I mean, yeah, I need some more information. What exactly? Okay. Uh, does any of this technology allow broader use distribution of virtual reality over an Internet? And I think you just answered that question. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. Just, just to... I should... yeah, yeah, go well, ahead. Yeah, I think that obviously there is a component, as I referred to. I mean, the examples we then saw was more, you know, the, let's say the, the, the stationary environment. But obviously there is the means to do this online. Um, and obviously Web 2.0 is, you know, with, from a desktop system perspective, now having our offering on PLM 2.0, which takes advantage of the Web 2.0 capabilities. Obviously there is um, that strategy part of the offering. So we have to talk about the exactly is expected there, but uh, one of the deliverable mechanism is obviously to do this web-based. So there can be training. You can, you know, have examples today or, or links where you can see uh, interactive uh, web-based scenarios where people could log into an environment, then perform a particular course or just experience uh, this environment. So obviously, the web-based portion is also part of part of the offering. You obviously lose some of the. Uh, immersiveness and interactivity you can have being in a cave or having head mount devices. So it's a different level of uh, uh, experience, but clearly it's one of the deliverable mechanisms. Thanks. Um, and I, I usually keep our uh, question, the folks asking the questions anonymous, but um, Rob, some of these questions are actually coming from folks from HP. <laughs> so um, this next one says, how do engineers from HP contribute to this, um, the visualization services? And, and I think the earlier question about where you're located came from an HP um, staffer as well. So it sounds like there's some folks at your company that <laughs> want to learn more. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, yeah, I think just, just follow up with me afterwards, and I'd be happy to, uh, you know, to address those situations. Okay, someone would like to know, what is the process for defining avatar actions and operator interfaces? Yeah, we should follow up on that question, though, because there could be, a, in, in, you know, quite a bit long discussion. So can we have, then, obviously, that information on... Sure, yeah, absolutely. Follow up on that? Okay. Yeah, but, uh, yeah basically, that, that is what the Delmia application has done for many years, is to, uh, you know, have that ergonomic capability built into it and, and allows you to define the you know the work motions that are necessary for uh, work different tasks to be completed. Uh, another person would like to know from India um, if you're using virtual management in the oil and gas exploration fields or the virtual this virtual reality tool in oil and gas. Exploration. So, if it, yeah, so the example we showed is around exploration and production. So um, activities taking place on an offshore drilling rig, um, th these are the scenarios we kind of want to tackle with this. We're starting to address um, with some customers and projects. So if that's what he's referring to, obviously there's also the, you know, the animation you could create um, around you know, subsea type activities, ROVs, et cetera. I mean, there's obviously a list of potential applications we could address. But clearly, that area, I believe, is one of the most, most critical ones to, to tackle, where the value of doing it virtually is, is extremely high. Um, how are design changes or as built? handled, especially um, with incremental design changes? Yeah, obviously that refers to um, the preparation. So the first step I've been explaining on, on the 3D uh, or the, the, the data, the asset creation. 
obviously there you could use you know common means if you have a particular engineering tool to track and keep uh, track of those changes from whatever system you use or if it's you know, from our perspective, we would absolutely then, which we didn't talk about in this presentation, have through our you know a project and information data lifecycle management system, which is Anovia, the capabilities then to manage the different configurations and the evolution of the of the plant or facility uh, based on any new engineering change orders. Obviously, those can be part of part of the offering. I didn't explain that into more detail. But if there's more questions, obviously we have, uh, as part of the overall PLM offering, a solution there as well. Exactly. I think that that's where linkage to that source data is 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 key, and in the format under which that happens is is where you define whether or not you get notifications of changes or or you get automatic pushes of changes, and and how do you interact with that is is part of designing the overall solution. All right. And last question. Um, Actually, two two more questions. Can the model be accessed through the web server without downloading the client, basically just by clicking from a friend at an oil and gas company? <laughs> I, yeah, you don't I have think to you just... I mean, this are, yeah, I think these are very light environments. You don't have to download the client to do that. I mean, you have very simple means to, um, if I understand the question right, through the publishing environment to access this information. So obviously since it's web-based, it has to be light um, and, and fast. So there's no particular uh, client or so needed on, on each platform. So it goes, since it's web-based, um, um, through coming from a central server where this information is located. OK, great. Um, well, we have hit our, our 12 o'clock hour on the East Coast. So I want to thank, uh, thank you very much, Rolf and Rob and everyone, and Steve, and um, everyone else who helped uh, prepare and set this presentation up. We will have, um, again, the copy available on our fiatech.org webpage. And we'll be sharing uh, that information, of course, with Dassault and HP and Barco. Uh, I want to just thank you again. I've actually had a, quite a few emails coming in here that said, great presentation, Rolf and Rob. So <laughs> um, I'm sure folks will be following up with you um, individually after the presentation. So with that, thanks, everyone, and uh, have a great week. <laughs>